All right, I'm setting up the uh, Chirp transducer here with the Evo 2. It's a very cheap transducer compared to what you get. It's about 300 bucks, a little under $300 for the transducer. The Evo has Chirp built in. You can get it with the sonar hub. And I'm gonna show you how to set up the fish finder with the Evo 2. It's very simple. We got some boat traffic out here to deal with, but can't help that. Right now, everything is set on auto. First thing I adjust is the color. I know the bottom is gonna be my hardest return, so I'll turn my color up so I get a solid color. This palette here, the bottom or solid returns are red, so I wanna get a nice thick red return. I'm getting a double return here, which shows a hard bottom. So I know my color is set where I want it. Really easy. Gain is auto, I'm gonna leave it there for right now. On auto, it means it's gonna increase the strength of the gain as I go into deeper water. Now, Chirp sends out a lot of pulses at one time. It doesn't send out one and wait for it to come. That's why already on this drop-off, we're marking fish. With the old traditional style, we wouldn't mark fish on a drop-off sometimes because the cone would go down, the very edge of the cone would hit ground, and the return would go back up, showing that there's no fish. The entire return doesn't hit the bottom, just the edge of it would hit the edge of the drop-off and send the return back with no fish under it. You don't get that with chirp. With chirp, you get your fish on your drop-offs. I'm gonna X that out and get back where I was. I'm marking some shallow fish over here above the thermocline. You can see the first band of heavy water starts in about 10 feet to about 15 feet. Now the gain is set on auto. You can see it's doing a pretty darn good job. I don't mind if I get some noise in there. I want a little bit of noise. I know that my gain is, is set high enough when I have a little bit of noise and I can show that thermocline. If I don't like the noise, I can go to auto and I can turn it down just a little bit at a time here until that little bit of noise goes away. But my returns are slightly weaker. Now these are small fish here. This is Lake Gaston. There's not many big stripers here anymore. There's some largemouth bass, some catfish, but these are likely here. Small stripers, crappy, definitely catfish near the bottom. And all of a sudden you can see I'm getting less and less returns because I turned my gain down minus five. Also, I probably won't mark bait as strong. So I don't mind a little bit of noise. I go to auto usually and maybe auto plus one or two. Now let me show you another cool setting that you get. I'm going to go into advanced settings, TVG, time value gain. With this, I have it set very low. What this does, it increases the gain lower in the water column and reduces it up high. You're probably not going to mark many fish a one foot under your boat. So there's no sense in having noise up there. You can see if I turn this up, it erases more and more return to the top part of the water column. If I turn it down, there it is. There's everything I want to see. So I'll turn it up just enough to get rid of the top stuff. Not too much. That's good enough because I don't want to miss all that stuff. If I go up here, look at that, it erased everything. And I want to see that, especially in shallow water. So three, four is a good place to leave it. I'm in 14 feet of water. I'll take you back over that drop off. I'll speed up. I'm only doing about, I don't know, three miles an hour. I'm sorry, here the other unit says I'm doing five miles an hour. I'll take you back over that drop off and you can see how the gain adjusts for me. Solid double return on the bottom. That shows it's a hard bottom here. This chirp is just incredible. The target separation you get. A lot of people think the chirp is for, you know, a thousand feet of water and blue water out in the ocean. Not so. If I want to get good target separation, I want to know exactly how many fish are in that school. I can know that now with chirp. Where before I would just get a blob or some boomerangs mixed in together, fish arches mixed in together and guess. Now here's a drop off. It's automatically increasing the gain here. Automatically because we're going into deeper water. There's some arches on the bottom, some catfish or whatever. Slow down just a hair. There's some more. These are small fish here, three to five pound catfish probably. It didn't take me hours to set the transducer up. All I did was go a little below the water level and tow the, the, uh, the following edge of the transducer down a little bit so I don't get air. And again, you see this little bit of noise in here. It's okay. It's okay. That's how you get these good, strong returns. 
Also, you want to check here, and I'm going to show you. I don't have any noise rejection on. It's off. My scroll speed is normal. Another little trick. Ping speed. Crank it up. Crank it up to max. Noise rejection, when you turn it on, it slows everything down just a little bit. You can see I cranked up the high just to show you. It's getting rid of all your noise, but you're losing the awesome fish arches. What's nice is this thing is engineered to death, so you don't even need the noise rejection. I have more equipment on this boat electrically than almost any boat you'll see in the world. I can run my trolling motors, all different kinds, radar, everything. I never have interference. I haven't had it ever, really, to be honest. Again, time value gain about three to four. Scroll speed normal, that gives you the really nice arches. You can speed it up when trolling, I always do. Ping speed, I crank up to max. Scroll speed, I'll show you. You can go two times, four times, three, oh, three times, four times, back. And it just cranks it up a little bit. If I'm trolling or if I'm running on plane, I'll turn up my scroll speed. Right now, when I'm just fishing, drifting, going slow, less than 10 miles an hour, I like it on normal. Maybe one, maybe two times the speed. Oh, normal is, is fine. And that's all there is to it. There really aren't any more settings that you need to get into. Let me show you something else here that's really cool with this transducer. I can dial in whatever frequency I want. You can see I have 105. I dialed that one in myself. Frequency, you can see I have it on custom. I hit frequency. It dropped it to 83 and automatically adjusted the gain. You can see it dropped right down when I went to 83. I'm going to back out of here so you can see. 83 is a wider cone. It may mark more fish or longer wider arches, but I'm losing a little bit of my structure near the bottom. It's much more sensitive as well. That's why it cranked the gain all the way down. If I want to tweak that, I can go ahead and hit frequency again. It jumped to medium chirp, which is probably about 115 kilohertz. You can see, I had to turn the gain up a little bit automatically. Getting a little bit of noise in there. It's di Right now it's adjusting itself. I'm on the edge of the river channel right here. I turn back down just a hair. If I want, I found that 105 works really well. I just tweaked it. I can put 107, 120, anything up to 145. This transducer goes from 85 to 145. 105 seemed to be really cool for me. I get a nice solid return on bottom. I mark the fish I want. I get good structure and good fish. So 105 seems to work really well. This transducer is the 150 300 watt chirp transom mount. It's not a through hull. It was less than 300 bucks. Navico uh, has Airmar make them for them. Great product. Love it. Check out this feature. I'm marking all these fish down at the bottom. Just the turn of the knob, zoomed in closer to the bottom. I can move this wherever I want to zoom into and just keep it focused on the bottom. Look at that. How simple is that? Another great feature. Just the turn of the knob, I can zoom in tight as I want to the bottom. Look at the separation on those fish on the bottom. One, two, three big arches right on top of each other. Zoom out just a little bit more. It's a custom frequency. I just dialed in 105. That is amazing. Look at the separation on the bottom of those fish. You can count them up. All right, let's see. Check out the other pallet view. I like this one here. Pallet number three is a good one. Wow. All right, I'm gonna show you how to set up some pages too. It's really cool. Hit the pages button up here. On the right side here, has a whole list of pre-made pages. I'm gonna make a new one here. 
and I'm gonna take whatever I want. So I'm gonna take echo. I want a little structure scan in there, and let's say chart. Okay. Well, if I don't like that layout, I can move the chart up here, sonar here. I changed my mind. I want sonar back. You know what? I don't even want GPS on there. Chart. I'm gonna dump that over there, and I like this one. I'm gonna save it. I can go ahead and I have my structure scan paused on the other unit. I can save it. I can add a bar up here. A, uh, I can control my music. I'm going to go back to my pages. And let's see, which one did I just saved? This one here. That's the one I just saved. I'm going to go back and edit that one. Hold it down. You know, I don't like it at all. Boom. It's gone. See ya. Alright, go back to one I made. This one I made with two sonars. I like this one because on this side I can set a different frequency and I'm, I'm controlling this one right now so I medium chirp on the other one let's do 83 on this one back it out let's see I don't know what range I had I could change the range on this one versus that one you know if I want to zoom in on this one I could zoom in on this one and not that one X out see this one here it does slow it down slightly when you go to two different frequencies I mean, 33 feet of water, you can see it scroll, slowed the scroll speed down. Now, to, to, to fix that, remedy that, I can turn my scroll speed up a little bit. But it doesn't bother me so much in this situation. I'm just drifting anyway. I'm zooming in tighter and further out. If I want to go back to my other one, hit pages. Let's see, I can go through. If I just hit echo, it'll automatically just go straight to echo if I hit it again. You can see this was when I was on a different frequency. Look at the difference. From 105 kilohertz to medium chirp, which I believe is 115. Not much of a difference. Only 10 different 10 kilohertz, but you can see a difference in how long the arches are. I'm gonna go back to 105, which I really like. It's a custom one I made. There it is. It saved it in there. I always hit the okay twice. Set to go. I see these fish on the bottom here. I want to zoom in. I really like that zoom feature. How quick it is. Because with combining the zoom with already insane target separation you can really see exactly what you're doing what's below you i can drop a probably a, a a bait right down on those fish and catch one right now unfortunately i don't have my rods with me i'm just out here playing with the fish finder all this i have the gain turned up a little well, i'm sorry auto gain here you can see all this in here this mess what all that is that's the colder denser water that's sitting down in there and all those fish are sitting right where the thermocline has met uh, the bottom. These are just smaller fish with the green in them. The red are much stronger returns, bigger fish. And all this haze that you see in there is just that band of heavy water that's sitting in there because of the thermocline. It's midsummer. It's July 4th weekend. And that's what that is. Don't try to dial down your gain to get rid of that. It's okay to have some noise on the screen. That's how you mark your thermocline. Turn up your gain so you get a little bit of noise. That noise is good stuff. It's not a bad thing.